Hi, and welcome to Roswell United Methodist Church. My name is Michael Cromwell, and I have the joy of serving as one of the associate pastors here at RUMC. Thanks for joining us for our on-demand version of the sermon, which will be delivered later today. If you'd like to watch our services live, you can do so via our live stream at 9 o'clock and 11.15. Notice our different worship times and our different hours that we have now. You'll also be able to see the entire worship service on demand later this afternoon at rumc.com slash sermons. We are so glad that you are with us today. We're thankful for your presence and we're thankful for your generosity and the different ways that you are helping to make RUMC a place of community and faith. Let's have a word of prayer before we hear our sermon. Gracious and loving God, we love you so much and we are grateful for this day and this day that we have to worship you. May the words that we are to hear, may they not only pierce our ears, but pierce our hearts as well, that we might be changed in different people because of what you have to say to us today. We thank you and we love you all in Christ's name we pray, amen. Now let's hear our sermon from today. This morning I'll be reading from Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 through 3. And this is what it says. Therefore, since we have so great a cloud of witnesses surrounding us, let us also lay aside every encumbrance and the sin which so easily entangles us and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him who has endured such hostility by sinners against himself, so that you may not grow weary and lose heart. Pray with me. Lord, breathe your spirit this day, that we may be strengthened by you, and know that, that you are the author, you are the perfecter of faith. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. I have a close friend that uh, we've been friends since we were boys, and uh, which really doesn't seem like it was that long ago. We, uh, <laughs> we've been friends for so long. We've been through, through a lot. And, but there was a particular time in his life that um, is after, after high school, after college, where... Um, he had gotten married. He had married his high school sweetheart. They dated through high school, dated through college, and uh, dated over nine years, and then stayed married less than nine months. Uh, she told him that he was trying too hard. Well, nobody was really sure what that meant, trying too hard, but it didn't make any difference because she left him anyway. And uh, and that started a, a, a period of time where, I mean, it just seemed like everything happened to him. Uh, shortly after that, he had op started his own business. And it was in that time of starting a business where the business is, is pretty vulnerable. He was up on a 30-foot ladder. And I don't know if you know how high a 30-foot ladder is. It's 30 feet. And 30 feet is high a high ladder, a very high ladder. Well, the fellow that was supposed to be holding the ladder for him decided he'd step away. I don't know if he figured he was going to smoke a cigarette or phone a friend, just what he was going to do, but he stepped away from holding the ladder, and the ladder slipped and fell. My friend fell 30 feet. Well, he jumped off the ladder right before it hit the ground, but it wasn't like a cartoon at all. No, it busted him up, busted him up pretty good. He, uh, he broke his feet, broke his tailbone, and he was put to bed for a, for a long time because it busted him up so badly. And, uh, I, you know, I, it was one thing after another that was happening to him. The only thing I figured that was going to happen next was that you know, spontaneous combustion. He was going to be watching TV one day and all of a sudden, poof, burst into flames. That was just about the only thing left. I, it was just one thing after another after another. And there's some southern expressions that talk about this. One is snake bit. He was snake bit. I mean, just everything just turned into a hard and a difficult time. Well, 
Now he's doing great. Back then he never could have imagined that he would be doing as well as he's doing now. He's just doing fantastic. But he was snake bit during that period of time. Things were just bad. Another southern expression is he was followed by a cloud. Yeah, that he just couldn't see his way. Well, that's a southern expression, but there's a Bible expression. We read about it this morning, being followed by a cloud. But it's not a bad thing. Being followed by this cloud is a good thing. As a matter of fact, it's one of the very best things. It, it starts off of verses this morning. It says, therefore, since you're surrounded or, or followed by such a cloud of witnesses. Well, this cloud isn't one bad thing after another. This cloud are, are people. People. People who've gone before, and that's what all of chapter 11 is about in Hebrews. Hebrews was written to teach teachers the basics of the faith, to teach them the basic doctrines of the Christian faith, and to teach them what they should teach others. And, and all of 11 is about this, this cloud, this cloud, people who've gone before that urge, that encourage that give hope, saying you can do it, those that surround us. And a lot of those are, are names we'd recognize, like Abraham and Sarah and Jacob and Joseph. Some of those are names that aren't so familiar. They're names like Gideon and Jephthah and Barak. But all of these people are folks that at one point in their lives, they were snake bit. They're folks that had fallen. They're folks that didn't just stumble, they fell. But they're all folks that rose to their feet. And these are the people. These are the people, those that have gone before, and maybe you can add to it as well, those who've gone before that are cheering us on, saying you can do it, giving us encouragement, well, a lot of 2020 felt a lot like being snake bit, didn't it? 2021, I want us to know that, that we've got a cloud, not a southern cloud that follows us. This is a biblical cloud that follows us, a biblical cloud that surrounds us, people that are encouraging us, people who've been there, people who are saying, you can do it. People who are calling us forward. And that's what I want to talk about this morning. We're being followed by a cloud. And it urges us, urges us, don't lose footing. And that's the first thing that I want to talk about this morning. Verse 1 says, Let us also lay aside every encumbrance and the sin which so easily entangles us. And let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Now don't get tripped up. Don't lose your footing don't lose your footing. And that's the first thing that I want to talk about this morning. So often we think of sin, and that's what it talks about, stumbling over and entangling us. So often we think about sin as actions that we do. And we say, as long as I don't do those things and I do do the right things, then, then I'm I'm headed on the right path. But the first time that the Bible talks about sin, it doesn't talk about an action at all. It talks about an attitude. And God's doing the talking. It's Cain and Abel. And Cain, well, he's put the pouty face on. God says, why has your Cain, why has your countenance fallen? Well, what it means is his lips poking out and his face is looking, is just drooping. And it turns out that Cain and Abel both have given an offering to God, and God had high regard for Abel's offering, but not so much for Cain. And so God turned to, to, to Cain and said, if you do well, your face will be lifted. If you do not, sin is crouching at the door, ready to devour you. That sin isn't something that he's done. Sin is something that's, that's an attitude it's hiding. It's hiding in that secret place. It's hiding in that dark place. 
that sin is that attitude that we'd like to keep hidden. We'd like to keep hidden from, from God. We'd like to keep hidden from ourselves. We'd like to keep it hidden from other folks. But during 2020, a year that's been hard on a lot of folks, our routines were turned upside down. Our pace, our schedule, life was turned upside down. And some of those dark places, well, they began to be revealed to us and to others. And it may be in, in some of those, those places you found strength that you didn't know that you had, but in other of those places, you found something lurking there that you really didn't want to discover at all. That there was something there in the hidden place, in the dark place, in that secret place, ready to devour you. Alcoholics Anonymous has done a great job over the years of helping people recover from addiction. And one of the sayings that AA has is, you're as sick as your secrets. I like that saying. I like that saying a lot because they know that that's where we lose our footing, trying to avoid our secrets, trying to keep our secrets secret, trying to keep those secrets from God that those are the, the places that we're entangled. Those are the attitudes that cause us to trip up. Those are the places that, well, they keep us snake bit. They keep us in that hard and that difficult place. Hebrews 2.18 says, For since he himself was tempted in that which he has suffered, he is able to come to the aid of those who are tempted. Jesus Christ knows what it is to be tempted. And he's able to come to your aid. He's able to come to your aid. Call him. Invite him. Welcome him to that secret, that hidden place. That place that you're dealing with today. Ask him for his help. And I'll give you the good news. He has power enough to come to your aid to help you. Because you and I, we're surrounded. Well, we're followed by a cloud. It's the kind of cloud that cheers us on. Those who've gone before that say, you can do it. Get up, get going. And Jesus gives power. Power that gives you the ability to get up to get going. Don't lose your footing. Don't lose your footing. Second thing that I want to talk about is don't lose your focus. This is what it says in verse 2. Fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of faith. Back in 1990, the Atlanta Braves were playing the New York Mets. David Cohn was pitching for the Mets and Braves batter got up to, to bat and hit the ball between first and second base. It was closer for the first baseman, so he went to field the ball, and whenever the first baseman's pulled off the bag to field the ball, that's when the, the pitcher goes in to, to get the throw to, to tag first base so the batter will be out. Well, that's what David Cohn did, but the umpire said he missed the bag and that the runner was safe. Well, David Cohn went nuts and began to argue with the umpire. Well, the umpire hadn't called the play dead. So the, when the Braves realized that Cone was so involved in the argument, they just kept running the base, scored two runs before David Cone let go of the ball and pulled out of the argument. Well, it's easy. It's easy to lose focus when we get caught up. And something that we don't think is fair. When we get caught up in the injustice. It's easy to lose focus. When we get caught up on where someone else has done something wrong. Where someone else is not doing what we think they're not supposed to do. But this says don't lose our focus on Jesus because he's the author. And the perfecter of faith. That none of us. We're called to faith 
because of someone else being bad. None of us are made better because others aren't doing what they're supposed to do. That Jesus is the one that brings us to faith. That Jesus is the one that's the perfecter of faith. And that word perfecter, it means the one that matures us in faith. That helps us grow in faith. James Moore writes about this when he said, I've been around the church for a long time now, and over the years I've come to realize that there are three approaches that describe the way people relate to the church. Some people relate to the church childishly. That is, they say, I'll come to church as long as you please me. I'll participate as long as you let me sit where I want to sit, as long as I get the choir robe I want, as long as we sing the hymns I like to sing. As long as the preacher says what I want him to say, as long as the teachers teach what I want them to teach, I'll come as long as you make me happy. But if anyone crosses me, if anyone does something I don't like, I'll quit. I'll jump on my tricycle and go home. How childish. And then there are some who relate to the church in an adolescent way. They say, I don't need the church. I surely don't need to go to Sunday school. That's for kids and old folks, not for me. I'm going to live my life out there in the far country doing my own thing. I have three cars and a boat. Why would I need the church? Nobody's going to tell me how to live my life, especially not the church. James Moore goes on to say, But then, thank God, there are those who relate to the church as spiritually mature adults who say, Let me be the church for others. Let me be part of the continuing ministry of Jesus Christ. Lord, make me an instrument of your amazing grace. Let me be a servant Christian. Let me do whatever needs to be done to help the cause of Christ in the church. That movement, that movement from servant to self to servant of Christ is that movement that moves us toward perfection, toward maturity, toward being the the men and women, the sons and daughters that Jesus Christ has called us to be. And we're surrounded. We're surrounded by a cloud, a cloud of of folks who've gone before, those who've, who've stumbled, those who've fallen, those who've been snake bit, but who've gotten up and moved on, moved on to maturity. My invitation to you is that in 2021, that you get up, that you get going, that you move from from servant to self to servant of Christ, reaching out. How can I help others along their path of faith? Don't lose focus. Jesus is the author and perfecter of faith. Don't lose focus. And the last thing that I want to talk about this morning is don't lose heart. Don't lose heart. Verse 3 says, For consider him who has endured such hostility by sinners against himself, so that you may not grow weary and lose heart. Joyce Halliday tells a story about a teacher who was hired by a school system to teach boys and girls who were either hospitalized or at home over an extended period of time because of illness. That this teacher would get her assignments from the teachers of these, these boys and girls, and she would go to the hospital, she would go to the home, and she would help them so they wouldn't fall behind. This particular day, she was assigned to a boy that was in the hospital, and just before she entered the room, she realized where she was. She was on the burn unit. And nothing would prepare her for what she was about to find as she entered into the room. She was supposed to teach grammar, nouns and adverbs, to a little boy who was badly burned all over his body. And throughout the lesson, about the only response she got from him was moans and groans. And she began to ask herself, what am I doing here? Well, the next day she ran into to one of the young nurses there in the hall in the hospital, and the nurse said, 
what did you say to the boy yesterday? Well, the teacher started to apologize, but before she could say a word, the nurse kept going. She said, whatever it was you said to him, that changed everything. Well, she later found out from the boy. The boy said, I didn't think I was going to live. But then I began to think, they wouldn't send a teacher to teach nouns and adverbs to a boy that was going to die, would they? So I decided that I could live. Hope. Hope. Hope is a, is a powerful thing. Hope is a life-changing thing. And hope has a name. It's Jesus Christ. And he's not just out there in the, the cheap seats of that, that cloud of witnesses that are urging you on, encouraging you. No, Jesus takes his seat in your heart and mine through his Holy Spirit that, that he gives us his strength Isaiah 41.10 says, Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not look anxiously about you, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Surely I will help you. Surely I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Jesus. Jesus is the righteous right hand of God. And he makes his home in you and me to give strength that we don't have. Paul, while he was sitting in prison wrote a letter to the Philippians. And he says in verse four, ver, chapter 4, verse 13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. It's the power of his Holy Spirit that gives strength to your heart and mine. And for 2021, he's calling us on. He's calling us forward. In 2021, know that you're not alone. Yes, you're surrounded by a cloud, a cloud of witnesses, folks that are cheering you on, folks that are there to encourage you, folks who've gone before, folks who've been snake bit, folks who've been in that hard and difficult place, folks who've gone before but have gotten up and kept going. But more than that, Jesus Christ he lives in your heart and mind. And you can lean on him. You can rely on him. You can trust in his strength that he won't leave you alone. This morning it may be that um, you're in that hard place. You're in that difficult place. You're in that place where you feel like, well, you've been snake bit. Or maybe followed by that, that cloud and the southern expression. And that Jesus has been nudging your heart this morning. And that you want to receive him. Receive the power of his Holy Spirit. I want to pray with you this morning. Let's pray. Jesus, this day, you are our greatest need. Yes, there have been hard things that have happened in the past. But yes, you are stronger than those hard things. Your strength that gives us hope. It gives us wholeness in the broken places. There are people this morning that need to hear your voice, need to know your voice. It's not way off up in heaven, but it's right here. Breathe the strength, the power of your Holy Spirit this day that we might receive your hope, not lose footing, not lose focus, and not lose heart. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thanks again for joining us today. 
Um, just a reminder, if you'd like to watch the entire worship service, you can do so via live stream at 9 o'clock and 11.15 a.m. You can also view the service on demand a little bit later this afternoon at rumc.com slash sermons. Also, if you have any prayer requests, we would love to hear about those. You can send those in to pray at rumc.com. Also, if you'd like to give of your tithes and your offerings, you can do that online as well. And that's at rumc.com slash giving. Uh, thanks again for joining us today and for honoring God with your presence. We hope and pray that you have a wonderful week and we look forward to seeing you again next week. My name's Tom Davis. I'm senior pastor here at Roswell United Methodist Church. Thank you for joining us this morning. We're a church that's a place of community and faith, and we're a welcoming church. I hope that you experience that online, but not only online. My hope is that you experience it through our Facebook page. But not only that, once we meet together in person, we're at 814 Mimosa Boulevard, and I hope you'll come and experience it in person. We're a welcoming church. We're a biblical church. And we're a compassionate church. It's a place of community and faith where we help people live a Christ-centered life. And my hope is that you'll come and be a part of it. Thank you for joining us. <music>